So each class has uniques and we know that there are certain enemy types in Diablo 4 that have increased drop chances of certain items including uniques. Today guys we check out those universal uniques, items that can drop and work for every character class, what uniques they are, the enemies which have increased drop chances of said uh, uniques and in my opinion the best dungeons to farm after season 1 for specific unique farming like target farming. How's it going guys? My name's DPG and if you do enjoy the video, leaving a like really helps out and if you like what you see and want to see more, be sure to subscribe. So after season 1 dungeons have rotated, things have changed. This is like an updated video on the one I posted last time. So when it comes to farming specific dungeons to try and get those uniques to drop, any dungeon in reality is fine. But if you can roll a nightmare dungeon with a magic fine modifier on this, that's a way better method in doing so because you get those increased drop chances. Also, if you're looking for uniques for your class, videos will be all linked down below. Okay, so with season one, like I said, dungeons have rotated. Specific enemies drop, obviously, we know specific items. So there's increased drop chances from specific items in regards to these dungeons and these special uniques. Now, there's uniques that can drop across the board that ain't too rare. There's also seven uber uniques, one added with season one. We're going to check them all out today. So it's important to remember that jewelry like rings and amulets do not have any increased drop chances from any specific enemy type. So the Mounted Heart of Selig, the Mother's Embrace and the Ring of Starless Skies do not have any increased drop chances from any specific enemy type. Okay, so we're going to start with the Fists of Fate. This has increased drop chances from spiders. So the dungeons you want to be farming here guys are Seret's Lair and the Pallid Delve. Next up we have the Frostburn, this also has increased drop chances from dropping from spiders, again same two dungeons, so it's Leia and Pellid Delve. The Penitent Greaves, this has increased drop chances from those beast enemies, so for these guys you want to farm Order's Cave or the Tomb of the Saints or the Path of the Blind. Any or these dungeons will be great for beasts, so yes, do what you gotta do. Next up guys, we have the Razor Plate. This has increased drop chances from both beasts and spiders. So beast dungeons again, Order's Cave, the Tomb of the Saints and the Path of the Blind. Spider Dungeons, we have Seret's Lair and Pellid Delve. Now the Temerity, this is actually one I'm chasing myself. This has increased drop chances from the Drowned Enemy Type. So the best one to farm for this one guys is the Marina's Refuge. Okay, so onto the Butcher's Cleaver. This can drop from Fallen, Goatmen and Cannibals, but it has increased drop chances from those Fallen enemy over the Goatmen and the Cannibals. So Fallen Dungeons here, you want uh, Garen Hold, the Shifting City and the Halls of the Damned. Goatmen Dungeons, we have Mercy's Reach, Comdor Temple and the Hoarfrost Demise. Cannibal Dungeons, we have the Pellid Delve, we have Carnal House and the Faceless Shrine. Okay, so we're going to move on to the Uber Uniques. Now there's seven in total, one was added with Season 1. These you must know as well, they only drop on a World Tier 4 and their enemy level must be an 85 plus. It can't drop on a World Tier 3 and if an enemy is under 85, you've absolutely got no chance of getting these. So we'll start off with the newest edition. And this is called the Ahavarian Spear of Lycanda. I probably pronounced wrong guys, I'm useless at pronouncing these kind of weird names. This drops from Fallen and Goatman. So Fallen enemies we have Go and Hold, we have the Shifting City and the Halls of Damned. Goatman enemies we have Mercy's Reach, Comdor Temple and the Hoarfrost Demise.
Okay, so next up, guys, we have the end of Eos Visage. This uh, drops from Cortis and Cannibals. So the Cortis Dungeons, we have Faceless Shrine, the Heretic's Asylum, and the Halls of the Damned. Cannibals, we have Pellet Delve, we have Carnal House, and we have the Faceless Shrine. Next up guys we have the Doom Boonga, I think this is still an item no one in the world has got yet. It has increased drop chances on from Skeletons, Snakes and Beasts. Skeleton Dungeons, we have the Nostrava Deepwood, we have the Commodore Temple and we have Four Frost Demise. Snake Dungeons, we have the Forgotten Ruins. Beast Dungeons, we have Order's Cave, Tomb of the Saints, and the Path of the Blind. Next up guys, we have the Harley Quinn Crest. This drops from Cortis and Cannibals. So Cannibal Dungeons, we have Pallid Dell, we have Carnal House, and we have the Faceless Shrine. Cultists will have Faceless Shrine, Heretics Asylum, and the Halls of the Damned. So your probably best bet for farming this one, guys, is, is a Faceless Shrine, as this has both enemy types, which can drop this Harley Quinn crest. Next up, guys, we have the Grand Father. This drops on both vampires and spiders. Spiders, we have Seretsalea and Pellid Delve. And vampires, we have Deadman's Dredge, Arkhan's Grasp, and the Immortal Emanation. Now, you also must remember as well, guys, in regards to uniques, they can drop from those how tight chests, Ubi Uniques too. Now, they are super rare, like I said, and there's still a chance of you getting them. So, yes, when how tight is on, if you want a unique that can drop across the board, you may as well farm this place. But there we have it guys, those are the entire collection of Diablo 4 uniques that can drop across the board for all characters. Guys, if you enjoyed the video, leaving a like really helps out. If you like what you see and want to see more, be sure to subscribe. And hopefully guys, I will see you on that next one.